Let's head back down to Netherdale now. Gala against Peebles this afternoon. It was Peebles who got the victory. Let's get reaction to that match from Bruce Miller. Yeah, welcome back to Netherdale. I'm joined now by uh, members of both camps, the Peebles flanker, James Oakes. We'll come to him in a second, but uh, sitting beside me for the second week, running a pretty fed-up looking Gala coach, George Graham. Another loss in dwelt. It's got to be said, another pretty scrappy, poor performance. No, I think you're right, Bruce. It was obviously a very disappointing game. Uh, we made far, far too many unenforced errors and let Peebles into the game. Taking nothing away from Peebles, though, I think the same thing, we're having a huge problem with the breakdown area and uh, Peebles put us under a lot of pressure at that area and uh, you know managed to turn us over quite a few times. So it's, uh, yeah, pretty much the same as last week. Yep. I mean, you could see you were laying down a lot of the boys at half-time and to, to be fair, they came out, they, they upped the tempo, they looked pretty fired up in the second half. You got yourself back into the game but just seemed to fritter out again weren't able to, to keep that up yeah I think it's just that consistency of uh, you know that mental attitude that once you've scored you've got to come back and just don't rest on your laurels and as I said once again I thought uh, people's done very well because like anything else we let them back in the game and they went and scored pretty much every time we scored and you, you can't you can't let other teams just come back into it once you get your nose in the front and uh, unfortunately that's what we've done yep I mean it's two losses out of two were very early in the season but it, it's got to be turned round I mean can you pick some positives out of that uh, yeah, I think there's a few things. I think we're showing little signs of where we want to go, uh, but I, I wouldn't really like to say much about it, to tell the truth, because there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a huge amount. I mean, there's still lots of things. We've got lots of injuries, but, you know, not using that as an excuse. But I, I think when a lot of these players get fit and come back in, I think we'll see a different uh, shape to our side. But at the moment, we've got a hell of a lot of work to work on and uh, a lot of things to rectify. Yep. One man I thought looked a lot better today, your captain. You always looked at to, to give the boys a lead. He spent a lot of time, we thought, a bit, maybe a little bit too wide last week. He was taking ball you know, off, off nine and a little bit closer in this week. And there's guys, I think, probably learning to play with him. And, and he's, he was putting a lot of guys through into space. Well, we obviously identified that. We OP, I think he was frustrated last week against Jed. And he wanted to get his hands on the ball as much as he could. Uh, and as, as fit as he is, I think he can't just keep carrying on. So... We decided to get runners off in nine and off in ten, and which is a bit more down his alley. And just people having to recognise that he is a very good quality player and you have to run off him to receive the ball. And a few times it happened, but I think once again, I thought people's done exceedingly well to contain a, a player of OP standard uh, and, and all credit to them. Yeah, well, George, thanks very much for, for coming and talking to us. Uh, better luck next week. Let's just bring in people's now. We've got people's flanker, James Oakes standing there uh, waiting on us here well five points re regardless of, of your performance got to be pretty happy with the win there yeah it's good to, good to get five points down here um, I know last year we really struggled so we had a bit of points to prove to come back and get a win here yeah, I mean, looking at, at individual players, Neil Hogarth, I thought uh, just uh, two flashes of brilliance in the, in the second half there and, uh, and, and created two tries. And uh, Donald Sangster alongside yourself in the back row, I thought was absolutely superb. Yeah, well, we always know that uh, outside backs uh, have got a bit of foul power, so we just, if us forwards can get them on the front foot and spin it wide, we know we can get the rewards out wide. You've got the win, so I don't suppose you're going to be that fussed. But looking at the at the performance, you know we could be a little bit critical as well, and still an awful lot of work to do. Yeah, we've been working quite hard this week on the breakdown because I think it's just been a slight law variation, and we'll have to keep working on that. And as far as our lineouts go, we just we've got a few new ideas that we're trying to bring in, and you know take a few weeks to get them going back to the gates next week and very disappointing to lose there last weekend but I mean you're obviously looking to turn it back into the fortress that it's, that it's been for the last couple of seasons yeah well we've only lost there twice in the last three years so we want to keep that, maintain that standard and you know push forward and get up to the top of the table yep bonus point win here today at Netherdale so pretty happy with that and uh, feeling in, in good form to, to make a real push at the top of the table this year now. yeah definitely we've got a new few new guys in we've got a second rower and also got an outside centre, but uh, probably most mention is our halfback and standoff because they're just young guys, 18, 19, and really they stepped up today, and we we'll look for them to you know continue on that pathway. First for rugby, it has to be Radio Borders every Saturday afternoon. Tune into Saturday Sports Live. Don't miss the full rugby roundup every Saturday evening at a quarter to six. And to kickstart your weekend, listen to the Friday Sports Show. Radio Borders, first for rugby, first for sport.